Okay then, so for today's setup guys, I'm going to be showing you how to get up and running with the very awesome Atari ST Steam Emulator. So I last covered this almost a year ago, and after yesterday's Commodore Amiga Win Your Way setup guide, I thought to myself, let's actually take a look at Atari ST. So since my last recording of this, we've got a new version of Steam. So in this setup guide, I'm going to be showing you how to use floppy disk drives within the emulator itself. I'm going to be showing you how to map out your controllers, look at video settings, and actually how to to swap between models of Atari ST so pretty much everything in this one designed for absolute beginners check this one out <laughs> Okay, before I start today's Atari ST Steam Emulator Setup Guide for a Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. That just means you get a little notification pop up every time I release a video, which is sometimes up to three times a day, and you never know, the next setup guide might be one you're looking for. So also helps out my channel a great deal. So we're looking at the awesome and very awesome that is Atari ST Steam Emulator. I last did a setup guide on this almost a year ago and after doing yesterday's Commodore Amiga Win Your Way setup guide I thought let's give the Atari ST some love as well. So what we're going to do then first is actually download this and the link's going to be in my description. And you can get this from SourceForge. Now the version I'm going to be using today actually released around two weeks ago and this is actually the beta version. Just left click on here and this is going to open up a new SourceForge page. We're just going to wait patiently for this one to download. What we're going to do is just open up that Steam zip folder and just extract the contents. So once we've got the contents, what we're going to do next is take a look at what we need to go with this. So for this, I'm going to be using a TOS image. If you're new to Atari ST, TOS is the operating system and we need this in order to play games. Now the one everyone recommends, including myself, is the TOS 162 US image. If you just pop that one inside of that Steam folder for now, and I'm also going to be using Rambo Free by Ocean Software, which isn't a bad game, in .st file extension. Now, when we boot up Steam for the first time, it will tell us which file extensions it takes, but it largely takes most common ST file extensions. What I'm going to do with my game is just create a new folder, new folder, and call this folder Games. Just drag my game inside of there and pop my games folder inside of Steam. So let's open up Steam folder. And my games folder is now inside. Now you're gonna find four executable files there. Might look a little bit confusing, but let's break this down. So we got Steam 32. This is gonna be a 32-bit computer version of Steam. We also got Steam 64, which of course were 64-bit computers. And we got Steam Debug 32 in 64-bit. I'm going to just delete the debug versions. We don't really need these. Now, if you're confused over which version of this to use, all you need to do is go to your search bar and just type in system information. Of course, I'm using Windows 11. Uh, it might be a little bit different if you're using Windows 10, but if you're using Windows 11 under system type, it should say times 64 if you're running a 64 bit or times 86 if you're using a 32 bit and that's how you're going to find out which version of Steam to use. So I'm going to open up the 64 bit version. So welcome to Steam SSE. So let's just start this to set a few things up like it says, press yes. Now the next thing it's going to ask you for is to put the TOS image into place. So we're going to press OK on this because I've already got my TOS file. And here we go, so it's going to direct me straight into my Steam folder, which is of course where I've just put my TOS 162 US image. But I just double left click on this one. And like I was saying a minute ago, it accepts .st images, .stx, .dim or .msa. So plenty of different file extensions. And we're going to press OK. And I'm also going to use this folder just here and press OK. The reason is, is that I want everything to be within one folder rather than uh, folders and files everywhere. I just want everything nice and compact. 
and as it says we can actually use up to 10 hard drives on Steam which is really cool but we're not looking at that today uh, so I'm going to press no and we're going to press OK boom we're in so next thing we can do from here is actually open up TOS itself so if I just go up to the run button which you can find at the top it's like a little yellow play button Here we go. So if you're feeling a little bit nostalgic, this is TOS for you. Awesome stuff. Now, let me remind you that once you're inside of this window, you'll find that your cursor can not come out. It can't escape. So what we need to do is press F11 and that releases your cursor. And as you can see, we're now back outside. OK, cool. So next thing we're going to look at is actually loading up a floppy disk image. So as we know, I've got Rambo 3 and that's in .st file extension. Now, I'm going to use a Google Stadia controller for this. What we need to do before actually setting up a game to play is actually look at the configuration settings for controllers. So obviously press F11 to exit out of Steam. And what we're going to do is just left click on joystick configuration. Once this is opened, what we're going to do is start mapping out the controller. So if I left click on port 0 just here on up, I'm then going to press up on my D-pad on my Stadia controller. Uh, same for left and right and down and finally fire button. And that's all there is to it. Now, if you've got a game which is going to be running from port 1, then obviously you need to map out port 1. So for now, what we're going to do is just close out of this and actually take a look at loading up a game. So next to the joystick configuration, we got another little tab just here called Disk Manager. If we left click on this one, this will take us straight into our Steam folder. And of course we got our games folder just here, which I dragged and dropped inside just a minute ago. If I double left click there, here's my Rambo free game. And what I'm gonna do is just right click on this and go to insert into drive A. If I left click here, we can now see the disc is now inserted into drive A. Now, if you're using a two disc game, you would obviously then use a second disc and insert it into drive B, and it's that simple. So let's actually boot up the game then. We just need to go back into Steam. So if I left click back into the window just here and go into floppy disk A, and here we go, Rambo program is our game and we can run this game now, instead of doing this, we can actually, rather than go into insert the disc like I just showed you, you can actually just double left click on the game too. And there we go. So by just double left clicking on the game, it's going to take us straight in. So to play your game, all we're going to do is just double left click rambo.prg, which is the game. This is going to boot up. Now, right now, I've got the sound muted for this. I'm going to quickly show you how to enable sound. So obviously F11, and we're going to go to settings. Okay, so before I uncheck mute sound, if we go to full screen mode, we can then go full screen now. So first of all, what I'm going to do is just go back to sound, and I'm going to uncheck mute sound, full screen mode, and then simply go full screen now. Now you're going to find this might be a little bit too large and fat to stretch, but what we're going to do is look at that in a sec. And just by pressing F12, that exits from full screen mode back into window mode. So as you can see, yes, Rambo game looks very much stretched. It don't look that good. We can also go back to configuration or settings. So if we go back to full screen mode, we got aspect ratio, screen correct, adjusted. Now, if you want the real nostalgic experience of how it should look, then I suggest going to correct. And if we then go to full screen now, but before doing that, just remember sounds. <laughs> and 
And if you think that doesn't look right, then we've also got adjusted. Okay, so once you've finished playing your game, we also remember to eject disc. Otherwise, when you boot Steam back up, it's going to boot straight back into the previous game you was playing. So let's just go back to disk management. And from here, if you just right click on drive A, and what we can do from here is actually eject disk. So that's now removed. Okay, just to remind you, we can actually save all our settings we're doing in Steam. So to do this, what we're going to do is just go up to the little wrench just there, left click on it, save configuration file, and just give it a name. So I'm going to call it Steam uh, Setup. And we can save this anywhere. So this is actually going to default into the config folder within the Steam folder. If I press save, and what I'm going to do is just close it down. If I reopen Steam again with the 64-bit version, I go back to the wrench, load configuration file, and here is my Steam setup file I've just created. Just open it, and we're going to go to run. And we're back in again with the exact configuration that I just saved it with. Very awesome stuff. So what else can we do with Steam? We can do a lot with Steam. Again, if we go to settings just here, we can then go to say ST video. We can turn the window or the full screen mode into the classic ST monochrome, if that's the monitor you might have had back in the day. Uh, we can also turn borders off. We just check this one. And there we go. So normal and borders. We can also use scan lines here. If we just check scan lines and put this back to color for this. And there we go. So we have now got scan lines. Uh, we also got single pixels to use. And in fact, what I'm going to do just here is actually turn this into full screen. So you can actually see this in full effect how it looks. So remember to go to full screen. I'm just going to go to full screen modes just here. And I'm also going to make sure this is on adjusted for that full experience. And I'm going to go to go full screen now. Left click awesome stuff but it looks a little bit stretched like this so let's exit by pressing f12 and i'm going to put this to correct and let's go full screen now there we go that looks a little bit better so f12 and i'm actually going to disable stretch and if i go back now so lots of options there to play with it's a very good emulator and this is why a lot of people talk about steam like it is a good emulator it really is a really awesome emulator now we can also go to ST aspect ratio and just take away the scan lines for this one. And if we go back into full screen again, there, I think that looks pretty good. It's not bad, it's not bad at all. So let's actually take a look what else we can do with video settings. F12 to exit out of full screen mode. And from your settings, if we go to display, we can actually change the size of window modes just here. So currently it's on normal. If I pop this over to big, then we'll get a bigger window. So let's actually pop this into full screen mode with that classic monochrome monitor color. So monochrome, and to do this, I'm gonna to go to reboot ST and just press on run and full screen mode, go full screen now. There we go, classic ST style black and white. <laughs> so what else can we do with video settings and how the emulator looks? We just drop down to color control from here, we can turn it to black and white. We can turn it to green. And you might have noticed a minute ago, but when we was loading up Rambo, you'll get a uh, bright green letters and numbers. And what this is doing is showing you the disk drive track information. If you don't like it under on-screen display, if you go to uncheck disk drive track info. So with these settings applied, let's just open up Rambo.program. And of course, full screen mode is gonna be going back to f12 and settings and we're going to go down to full screen mode
And as we can see, the letters and numbers of the track information is now gone. We have got a little flashing light, which just tells us that the disc is being read by the system itself. And there we have it, so looking really awesome. So just remember, when you are happy with the video set, you've got to always remember to go to that little wrench and just save configuration file. And if you want to overwrite the current file that you've already created, then all you need to do is just left click on the file and then just go to save. Already exists, do you want to replace it? Just press yes. Another very cool feature with Steam is that we also got the ability here to change between machines that we can emulate. So if we just go to machine just here at the top, uh, just a minute ago I was using this on the STE. If we wanted to swap machines and emulate, say for example, the Mega STE, if I just select that, we can then change the amount of RAM or memory we got in from say 512 kilobyte up to 4 megabyte. So once you've chosen your new machine that you want to emulate, if we of course go down to configurations, just here, we can actually set up a new save. So just press on new, and for example, just call this Mega STE, uh, press enter, and there we go. So if we then close out a Steam, and then go back to configurations, and then load. So once we reboot ST, just make sure to go up to run, and that will kick you into the Mega ST. And we can actually clarify this by just using our cursor, left clicking on this little panel just here. And there we go, we've got the Mega STE. So that's it for the Steam Emulator setup guide for Windows PC today. So hopefully I've covered all the very basics there to get you started playing ST games here in 2024 through emulation. If you liked today's video, hit the notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also join me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. And be sure to check out my entire playlist for micro emulation setup guides. Until next time, stay retro.